Thank you everyone and this is the uh, last talk I think for today so you'll all be free to leave the building soon so I won't keep you too long. Um, yes, I, my name is Nicole Moore, I'm an accredited dietitian and have been for 20 years and um, I have a national team of dietitians across Australia. So one of my big passions is introducing dietitians out there to low carb and how effective it is and all the dietitians in my team across Australia all uh, support people in their low carb journey which I think is so important um, and I guess one of the messages to get out here today is that dietitians who do practice low carb have a really important role um, with people who are starting the low carb journey or perhaps um, already on it and having difficulties. That's my topic today. Rod asked me, Nicole, why don't you talk about the challenges because um, there's a lot of science and um, uh, information out there but sometimes it's not as easy as just uh, having more fat and, and um, not eating carbs. So what I am going to talk about today is um, three, I guess, regular challenges that um, I particularly come across in the clinic. Um, and hopefully for those, um, for everyone out there, that there may be something you'll be able to pick up today that might help you in your journey. Um, and I guess it's also a message for specialists and, and GPs out there that us uh, low carb dietitians um, are there to support your patients so that we can really sit down and take the time to help them through the challenges that they may get when they're on low carb. So the first one I'll be talking about today is LCHF vegan. Um, we get a lot of vegan, insulin resistant, overweight people coming in, particularly women, and they're really struggling to lose weight. Uh, they have elevated insulin and um, obviously the vegan diet is the challenge that I'll be talking about today. So if you are vegan, if you're vegetarian, maybe you do swing on days where you have uh, more plant-based food, then hopefully I can give you some tips on potentially how you can still achieve LCHF um, uh, with a vegan diet. The next one is irritable bowel. So what we get is uh, a lot of clients that come in with great gut improvements, but there are sort of a small group of people that come in and they are actually worse with their gut symptoms. So if you're someone that started low carb and your gut feels worse or you get bouts of gut irritation, then hopefully this will help you. Um, the last one is LCHF uh, and people who don't lose weight. And we do regularly get people coming into the clinic and their macronutrients look amazing, but they're just not dropping the kilos. So again, this will show you the journey of what we as dietitians do in practice to help people um, with challenges, um, to hopefully show you that um, us low carb dietitians are super important in the low carb journey. Uh, just for definition today, um, I will be using sort of the 60, 30, 10 kind of macronutrient profile, but we do individualise this. So the one thing that's super important when clients come in to see us is to individualise uh, low carb to suit them, because at the end of the day, we want them to come back and we have to suit it to their lifestyle and to their culture as well. And it also depends on how much, um, you know, how many uh, metabolic issues they've got going on as to how low we're going to go with carbohydrate. But for today, um, I'll be aiming for getting 60% of the uh, energy from fat, 30 from protein and 10 from carbs. So we'll start with vegan. Um, it's one of those things, I guess, that, you know, initially um, can stress the dietitian out. Um, and we're not here to try and convert a vegan to a, a meat eating diet. That's not our job. Our job is to help them uh, create weight loss and improve their insulin sensitivity um, using LCHF. So I guess we know the vegan diet pyramid, there's lots of plant, you know, it's all plant based. We've got lots of grains and vegetables, fruits, legumes, and a small amount of nuts and seeds. And really our challenge is, you know, as we're doing with um, everyone, I guess, is to get their fat right up as high as we can to at least 60% and really shrink their carbohydrate load down um, and staying with the vegan diet. So again, and I know everyone's talked about not using calories, but today just to kind of give us some targets to achieve, I have used a 1500 calorie plan. But again, as low carb dietitians and particularly in our practice, we really don't try to focus on calories because as Jessica was saying, it really does create issues with um, people becoming obsessed with counting everything. We try to just keep it as a general education. But for today, I have set some targets based on 1500 calories. So if we've got a vegan uh, client that comes in and uh, we are wanting to get a 60% uh, intake from fat, then that's going to work out to about 100 grams of fat a day because we know that nine calories, there's nine calories per gram of fat. Uh, then we know in our, in our minds that our target for protein will be around 113 grams. 
um, based on the fact we want to get 30% of the calories coming from protein at least. We know there's four calories per gram of protein, so now we've got our protein target as well. The last um, target that we have, um, I guess, is to not go over that 10% threshold for carbohydrate. Um, and if we're trying to keep it to 10%, which is only 150 calories of the energy coming from carbohydrate, and again, this is right on the low end, um, and we know there's four calories per gram, then we're, we're trying to not go over at least 40 grams of carbohydrate per day. We need to keep in mind that we want to maintain iron and we want to maintain protein. So with iron, we'll try and sort of cover the high end of the iron RDI to ensure that we're covering everyone. Um, so as high as 18 milligrams a day. And obviously legumes and grains are going to give us some um, iron, they're going to give us protein. So if we are eliminating or reducing, again, depending on the person's level of um, uh, I guess, um, metabolic issues. We're going to just focus on some greens and we're really going to push the nuts and seeds. So you hear me say that a lot. Um, so I guess our little summary is we know the vegan diet is high carbohydrate. There's a lot of veggies and legumes and grains, fruits and vegetables. Um, it can be a battle to get that carbohydrate down as low as 10%, but I've uh, given it a pretty good shot today. Uh, and we need to get enough protein and iron um, to uh, ensure that we're meeting our targets. So I guess what we would do as a dietitian with a vegan client coming in is we're going to give them some lists and we're going to say, look, we really want you to focus on dominating your meals with more fat. And again, we're not going to start giving them targets of 100 grams, but in our head, we know where we want to aim for. So we're going to really focus on them trying to increase their fat intake. And what I've highlighted in red, I guess, is the more um, low carb, high fat, iron rich sources. So we want people to go away and go, okay, let's try and base our meals around, you know, throwing avocado and using full fat coconut milk, olive oil and coconut oil. But we also want them to really hone in on those fat sources that give them some iron as well. And when we talk about iron, it's non-heme iron. So there's some tricks at the end to increase the absorption of that. So I'm really going to push um, my vegan clients to really focus on lots of seeds, getting pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds, uh, sesame seeds in and also throw in nuts that have got good iron sources. And this is not in any particular order, um, but they can go away with that list and go, okay, let's try and get our meals based on uh, these uh, food sources. So we have a look at a bit of a uh, breakfast and lunch I've sort of thrown together quickly. Um, what we've got here is the breakfast for our, our lovely vegan client is a vanilla protein powder shake, uh, made up with some almond meal and macadamia nut. And uh, what we're relying on here is the nuts in this shake to really boost the fat. And we'll come back to the protein in a minute. Um, with the lunch, we've done a nice um, seeded avocado salad uh, with some tahini dressing. So what you can see here is we're really focused on throwing some avo in and some tahini dressings, which is going to boost our fat. The great thing with seeds is they give, a bit, give us a bit of everything. So um, we're throwing in uh, plenty of pumpkin and sesame seeds, which are going to give us good fat sources, but we know we're going to get some iron in there. So we're going to sort of get our, our, our clients to really be focusing, throwing sort of fat boosters in like the avocado and the tahini, but really boosting up some seeds to create some iron rich sources as well. And what you can see here just in meal one and two is that we've already really hit 68% of our target for fat. Um, and we're already getting a decent amount of our non-heme iron in there just by focusing on dumping plenty of seeds in and boosting up with some avocado and tahini and nuts. But then we need to look at the protein. So with the protein, again, what we want to do is throw in some protein boosters. So again, we'll give them a list and we'll say, okay, these are the things we also want you to throw into your meal. And note, we haven't talked about fruit or grains yet because we're not going to. We're going to try and keep those out and try and get them to see how they can create a lifestyle that includes a lot more of these foods. Now, vegan protein powders, if you get a good quality one, can be as, as high as 77% protein. Um, so these are really good for us to try and get our clients to use for shakes or a snack should they need it. Um, again, the seeds come back in because they're great protein boosters, but they also give us fat. Um, and uh, tofu is good. I mean, look, it doesn't, it has a lot of protein in it. So we'll get them to try and throw that in to create uh, some more protein boosting. Gives us a little bit of iron and it's low carb. Um, and again, the seeds come back, the nuts are back in there, some nut butters to use maybe as sauces to create um, some stir fries. And obviously we'll be using sugar-free nut butter. Um, so if we have a look at meal one and two, 
we can already see that we're getting some great protein. Using the vegan protein powders for a smoothie um, is great because it really gives us a big, you know, a scoop will give us up to 23 grams of protein. We know our macadamia nuts in there sort of gave us some fat, but great, they give us a little bit of protein as well. And then our lunch, we're getting boosted with the seeds again. So I love seeds and uh, they're getting us some iron, some fat and some protein. We know it, we've got 68% of our fat and we're getting some good iron in there as well already. Um, and then the protein's already hitting about 40% of our 113 grams a day. So, so far I'm pretty happy with that. Then we've got meal three, um, assuming that they're having three meals a day and not maybe fasting over breakfast. Um, and what we've just done is a tofu spinach stir fry and my favorite sesame seeds are back in there. So, um, and what we've got here, if we look at our sort of um, targets, is you know we've got the sesame seeds, a really big generous sprinkle of those with a nut butter dressing and that's helping us boost our fat. We're getting some non-heme iron in with our tofu and our uh, seeds and greens and then we're getting great protein. So our tofu becomes a nice protein booster there. Um, the seeds give us some protein and our nut butter thrown in. And I mean, I've been sort of structured with portions but we don't want to structure portions. We just want people to understand what things they have to be throwing in to get good fat, to get good protein and get good iron. And you can see here, we've got another 40% of our fat needs. We've got great iron and uh, we're getting a decent amount of protein in there, relying on our, our tofu and nut butters and seeds. If you sort of um, uh, look at all the three meals, we've, we've quite easily met our targets for 100 grams of fat, for 113 grams of protein, and we've met 100% of our iron needs with our three meals, okay? Um, we also, you know, I, I definitely add extra fat in, so that sort of, again, we're not structured on calories, it was just for today to look at our macro targets. Uh, but, you know, throwing in plenty of um, uh, healthy fats, coconut oil, um, raw olive, you know, uncooked olive oil to really boost the fat up doesn't really give us any other sort of, um, you know, it doesn't give us iron or protein, but it's just to get the satiety through the day uh, where they're adding plenty of fat to their meals. And we asked what about the carbohydrate and generally when you're sort of focused on low carb fat and protein sources, um, then generally you're not going to over um, achieve your, you know, 10% of your carbs. So with those three meals I put together there, um, we've got uh, 30 grams of carbohydrate. So we've created a really good 60, 30, 10, 60% fat, 30% protein and 10% carb on a vegan diet, just focusing on getting those sort of low carb protein and fat sort of uh, sources into the diet with some greens. Um, and again, we'll try and just give people lists of how, what they can sort of try to aim to help balance their diet, um, but to create LCHF. We do need to sort of, uh, you know, think about meeting the RDIs of our, our other micronutrients. So for the, for the ease of time today, you know, we're going to, as dietitians, get them to use mushrooms and throw in their different types of nuts and seeds. You know, use um, nutritional yeast um, to throw in a stir fry to get their B12. Um, you know, chia seeds to get omega-3 fats and calcium. But we can get, you know, nutritional balance, and that's been shown in studies. You know, using um, uh, low carb, healthy fat diet still. So what we're doing is, you know, in summary, I guess, is we are, you know, depending on again the level of carbohydrate we need to achieve based on that patient's um, or that client's. Um, nutritional needs and their metabolic issues, we're either eliminating or, or taking out grains and legumes. We know they're good iron and protein, so we need to bring that back in other ways. We're either eliminating or uh, limiting fruit. We're boosting up low carb, high protein sources. So we want to throw in seeds and nuts. We want to use the tofu, the vegan protein powders for smoothies or to make up you know, protein balls and our nut paste. We also want low carb, high fat uh, sources. So again, the seeds come back in nuts, lots of avocado, tahini dressings. Add some fat boosters in for satiety. So if there's plenty of fat added, people are going to feel full um, and that's not insulinemic um, and good iron boosters as well. Um, and our other micronutrient boosters there and of course keeping our sugar out. So, um, and you can see, you know, if, you're, if it's a vegan client that's coming in and they're very insulin resistant, it's a little overwhelming to think about taking out grains and fruit and uh, starchy vegetables because they're kind of not left with much. So our job is to really try to create ideas that they can use to, uh, to live this life using those sort of uh, key points. And um, throwing in plenty of vitamin C is the last point with the vegan LCHF because we need to increase the absorption of the non-heme iron, which is iron that comes from plant, not animal. 
So, and that's very easily done, whether it's tomatoes, whether it's um, throwing in capsicum. I mean, half a capsicum contains 200% of the RDI for vitamin C. So very easy to throw that in. So if you're vegan and you're low carb, there is, um, it, it is possible to achieve. And we get great weight loss. Um, our vegan clients will come back, their energy's better. You know that their insulin switch has been turned off, their cravings have gone, they're losing weight around their tummy and they feel amazing. Um, and it's about then just giving them more ideas about how they can live this way. The next one is LCHFIBS. And um, this is a common one where uh, we get people coming in with lots of gut problems. So what can happen is we have two groups. We have group A that comes in and they're amazing. They feel great. The gut problems have all improved. But there is this unfortunate small group of uh, poor clients that come in and they feel worse. Um, and so today, if you're one of those people or if you have patients that uh, struggle with their gut, there is a reason for that. Um, and this is our FODMAP. So we call it fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides and monosaccharides. So what I want to show you today, and again, we're limited with time, so I'm not going to kind of spend too much time. It's going to be almost a checklist. If you're a person that has gut problems, you can start to maybe write down the things that potentially could be causing your problems and eliminate them. Um, so when we talk about FODMAPs, they're just poorly absorbed carbohydrates or sugars in the gut. Um, and just to sort of break it down, we've got the oligosaccharides, which is the O uh, in FODMAP, and that's fructans and galactans. So it's garlic, onions, wheat-based products, windy veggies, legumes, chickpeas, and broccoli. I'll show you the low-carb uh, sort of, I guess, food sources that have high FODMAP. Uh, you've got disaccharides, which are your dairy, the monos, which are the fruit sugars, um, and then polyols, which are the sugar alcohols. So what I'll do is take you through the low-carb, high FODMAP foods that we find cause the problems. Um, and these are what we usually then eliminate from their diet um, to improve their gut. So what we've got here with the oligos, and I've just kind of highlighted the main ones. I mean, generally, we're probably eliminating, reducing uh, legumes if we're doing LCHF. And again, we're not talking about vegan now. So um, that's not generally the issue. The main issues might come if they're eating a lot more windy veggies. Um, obviously, we're not having wheat-based foods, but if they're having maybe more cabbage noodles, maybe they're using leek more, maybe they're having eggs for breakfast every day now, they're using more asparagus. So these are the potential triggers for the oligosaccharides, and there's more. Um, nuts are also an issue. So what you've got is hazelnuts, almonds, and pistachios are particularly high in oligosaccharides. I haven't highlighted cashews, even though they are, because generally I would sort of discourage people to use the cashew nuts uh, purely because they've got a lot more carbohydrate base to them, as you can see. Um, so again, if they're eating these nuts, that's something will change and um, macadamias are always a good uh, go-to. Almond meal speaks for itself. We know low-carb baking requires almond meal as one of the options. Again, it's high in oligosaccharides and uh, it gives us some tummy issues. Um, also, it's high in oligosaccharides and um, you know, all this is based on the Monash uh, uh, University uh, app that they have out, um, is the blueberries and raspberries. So we all know when we go on our low carb journey that we go to berries if we're eating fruit. And um, therefore, if you're having r raspberries or blueberries, they have oligos in them. And remember, this is all threshold. So some people will get away with a lot more than others. And uh, what we do is generally eliminate it and then reintroduce it slowly. We'll, we'll, we'll challenge it back, work out what are the triggers, and then we'll reintroduce them slowly. So the volume of these will depend on the individual. So it doesn't mean that suddenly you can never have those. Uh, for some people, they may get away, away with half a handful a day before it becomes an issue. Another oligosaccharide, they're a dom 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 dominant FODMAP group, uh, is inulin. And you find inulin added to a lot of UHT, uh, coconut milk and um, uh, canned coconut milk. So if we've got lots of our lovely low-carb coconut milk coming in and it has inulin added to it, then this can be also a gut adjutant for our clients that come in. It's also found in uh, some probiotics and yogurts. So, you know, if you've got gut, got gut problems and you're having a probiotic that's got inulin in it, uh, that's actually not ideally helping you. The next group is the disaccharides, so that's the D in FODMAP. And what we find is there's a threshold for lactose. So if suddenly you're on uh, low carb and they're having more full fat milk or suddenly they're snacking on more full fat sugar-free yogurt, like a natural yogurt. They're making delicious keto ice creams, which I like to make at home uh, with dairy, uh, thickened cream. Uh, Monash uh, testing has shown that that can be a gut issue. 
uh, more uh, full fat uh, cheeses and excess butter and I'll come back to some portioning. So we just try to sort of move people over to coconut almond or macadamia milk, uh, obviously without the inulin and the coconut milk. Coconut milk based natural sugar free yogurt, make the ice creams with a, with a coconut cream uh, instead of milk. Um, they found with the testing on the Monash uh, app that the coconut cream and pure cream without thickeners in it uh, is uh, tolerated well um, and doesn't have a FODMAP issue to it. Um, cheese and butter in moderation. So they've tested it and found that sort of at that 40 gram mark with cheese and 20 grams with butter, then there starts to become an issue with the FODMAP content for people. So you can imagine if you're snacking more on cheese in between meals and you're um, you know, suddenly having a few uh, keto coffees with butter or you're cooking with butter, that's where the problem lies. The last one, uh, well not the last one, but the second to last one is fructose. Now fruit sugar generally isn't an issue because we all know us low carbers is that we're eliminating sugar, which means we're eliminating fructose. Um, we're also um, you know, reducing the fruit, if not eliminating fruit initially. Um, so the main areas that become a problem with low carb diets and high fructose can be boysenberry, sorry all the berry people out there, artichokes, asparagus and broccoli. Um, when you go to the app, the app um, you know, in certain levels, these become an issue. So if you're having, having any of these, that's mainly the area where fructose can be a problem. But good news, strawberries are okay. So they're low FODMAP and they're low carb. So um, the last list really speaks for itself. And uh, polyols are the last one. So I'm not going to spend too much time, but to list them, avocado, shredded coconut, coconut flour, cauliflower, um, mushrooms, we're having our lovely mushroom burgers with, as mushroom as the bun. Celery sticks are wonderful, portable or our nut butter snacks. Unfortunately, celery is an issue. And sweeteners. Um, and we, you know, a lot of people are using a lot of low-carb products, shakes, bars, which um, have sweeteners and they can be a big issue with the polyols or the sugar alcohols. Um, so, and, and just back with the coconut, I'm really sorry, but uh, shredded coconut, coconut flowers, high in oligosaccharides, fructose and polyols. So what you can see is that we can create a low carb diet for our clients that has a lot of FODMAP in it. So for those who have an irritable bowel and their gut's hypersensitive and they come back um, and uh, maybe they've lost weight but they're bloated, they've got diarrhea every day and they're not coping. Um, so, you know, what we need to do is make this um, high FODMAP, low carb diet, more low FODMAP. Um, you know, if we're having av avocado and we're cooking with more butter, um, we've got full fat yogurt, we're snacking on um, almonds, for example, um, celery's there, we're baking with these wonderful muffins and pancakes with coconut flour and almond meal um, and our lovely bulletproof coffees that have got extra butter and thickened cream in them. Uh, we've got lots of fob maps, and unfortunately, this is uh, poor little clients that come back not feeling very happy with us. So, um, what we need to do is teach them, and this is where dietitians who practice low carb really is important because we can sit down and spend the time transition them to a low carb, low fob map, get their gut feeling better, challenge back the fob maps, work out what their triggers are, and then they can live a life low carb but without feeling bloated or sitting on the toilet all the time. So, uh, you know, we're cooking in olive oil or coconut oil instead of um, butter. We're using low FODMAP veggies. We've switched our bullet coffees over to coconut cream without inulins. Um, and we're having dinner with lots of low, low, low FODMAP, low carb salads, but maybe without the unfortunate delicious cauliflower mash. Um, and the snacks are the same, you know, just snack on macadamias, not almonds. Have coconut milk, not regular. Use almond milk, my favourite AO almond milk, salted caramel. I make no money from that, but it's very delicious in coals. Uh, baking with more psyllium based products versus uh, almond meal and coconut flour, and there are great recipes out there. Nut bars with the right seeds and no shredded coconut, unfortunately. Protein balls with peanut butter and coconut oil. So, you know, we can create happy tummies. Uh, still doing low carb, which is really important. Um, last one, and this has been touched on already, but we get a lot of people coming in, particularly women who are, uh, you know, have really been struggling with their weight for a very long time. Um, and they come in and their macros look amazing. And I had a client just um, come in this week and uh, 25 grams or less of carbohydrate a day. She was having 60% fat, 30% protein, but she just wasn't shifting the kilo. She's like, Nicole, what am I doing wrong? Because I've, I've checked it on you know, all the apps and my carbs are super low. And this is where portions do count. So again, we don't want to necessarily 
you know, uh, look at um, calories. But what we find commonly, particularly our lovely lady clients who don't really, don't, uh, you know, and sorry, but we're not as calorically flexible as the uh, men, uh, the males out there um, who tend to come in and just chuck and butter and, you know, oil around and oh, I didn't have to watch anything and they're losing kilos of weight where the wife next door is going, I hate you and I'm not losing any weight and I'm sure I'm doing the same as you. So portions do count and so it's really simple message. We just, um, you know, really speak to people about just being a little bit aware of their portions. You know, they come and they're going, I'm doing great. I'm having, you know, under 25 grams of carb. I'm drinking MC2 all three times a day. I'm cooking with lots of cream. I've had four bulletproof coffees today and I had a cheese butter sandwich. And I say, look, that's amazing. Your carbs are low, but your calories are too high. So there is a point where calories matter. And so again, without us trying to get them to count them, we just try and keep it simple with portioning. Now, um, you know, sometimes I get out the big guns and we get out a menu plan with some calories on it, God forbid, but we do help them just see that this is 1500 calories. And to get a 60% fat intake, we only need a half an avocado or a tablespoon and a half of added fat, butter, coconut oil, olive oil with breakfast, lunch and dinner, and a small tablespoon of nuts in between. And um, look, in the beginning, people do need to overfat a lot just to help uh, improve their insulin sensitivity, get that hunger down. And then eventually they just have to fine tune it a bit. Some people just don't have an off switch, they're eating through other, other triggers. And so we just have to gently remind them that you don't need a bucket of macadamia nuts, you just need a handful. And uh, once they get the portion right and they realise they're not physically hungry and they don't need it, they get great weight loss and they come back and they think, you're amazing, you, you, that's a miracle, I've lost three kilos in the last two weeks. And it was just because they portioned. So, you know, we just talk about the palm of our hand, we try to keep it simple. You know, a couple of tablespoons of fat, half an avocado with your meals is all you need. We also do it with meat. We don't need to uh, eat half a cow, we just need to sit, eat what fits on our hand. And when people go away with that, they realise they're often just overeating through habit and that we can just help them still get a low carb plan, but just be a little bit familiar with servings if they don't self-regulate uh, like they should be. We also help people just count where the carbs are. Um, it is very easy to go above, you know, whatever the target is, if it's, if it's 25 grams or less. So just helping them understand where carbohydrate comes from is really important uh, because it comes from a lot of incidental sources like your nuts and your dairy. Um, and so depending on, again, where our level is at, and 20 grams is, you know, the ketogenic sort of area, but, um, uh, you know, we'll help them just add them up. So really today was if you are vegan and low carb or if you have irritable bowel, or you're struggling with your weight, as a, as a customer, you can walk away with maybe some tips. But what I guess my passion is, is to really, um, you know, part of my journey on low carb is to bring as many dietitians and hopefully there'll be, you know, half the room next year that are coming in. So spreading that message is important, which is why, you know, Jessica and myself do these types of talks to really get the message out there and that dietitians are important. You know, we can sit down for a low carb dietitian and direct and individualize and help people with their challenges that are out there Googling everything and, you know, sitting on the toilet with diarrhea or not losing weight stressed out because they don't know how to do it to suit their body. So thank you very much and um, you're free. <laughs>